Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series on IPv6 and Cisco Router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will be configuring ISOTAB point-to-mount-to-point -to -point tunnel to transport IPv6 traffic across IPv4 network. So just like what we have done in the previous lab, we're first going to start off with a network-to-network -network ISOTAP tunnel using static routes, and then we're going to try to enable EIGR PV6 across the tunnel to kind of automate our route advertisement. And one thing that kind of set the ISOTAP tunnel apart from any other kind of tunnel is the ability for an client that runs a dual stack to build a ISOTAP tunnel to any other devices that also support the ISOTAP tunnel without actually having to rely or sitting behind a IPv6 gateway to provide the IPv6 connectivity. So that's why we're going to also look at the client to network ISOTAP tunnel specifically on Windows 7. For our lab topology, we have two routers, R2 and R3, connected over VLAN 123, which is IPv4 network with the Azure IP enable. And that's going to provide connectivity between R2 and R3 loopback interfaces, which we'll be using to source our tunnel interface. Behind R2 and R3, we have IPv6 networks that we're trying to provide connectivity between them across tunnel one. And this is for our network to network ISOTAP tunnel. Here we also have two of our Windows 7 test machines running dual stack. And you can see how these machines are connected directly to our IPv4 subnet. And they are also going to try to build an ISOTAP tunnel to the router R2 across tunnel two to be able to access this IPv6 network across the IPv4 subnet that we have here as a VLAN 123. Here we also have a Windows 2008 DNS server, the IPF.32, that one of these hosts is going to be using as far as ISOTAB router discovery. So you can see that later on in this lab how DNS record will be utilized for that. And as always, we have a wild chart machine set up to span some of our ports so we can monitor the packets and see how the messages are exchanged or encapsulations is done throughout this lab. So a little bit of background on the ISOTAB tunnel. So the ISOTAP tunnel is very similar to the IPv4 compatible tunnel where the IPv4 tunnel destination IPs is embedded as part of the IPv6 next hop. So you can see here with IP next hop format, it looks like this with the IPv6 prefix for the first 64 bit followed by 0, 5E, FE, and then ending with the 32 bit IP address of the tunnel destination. So for example, if the tunnel destination for the subnet is our R2 with the IP 172.16.02, then any other network that tries to reach the subnet behind R2 needs to have the next top pointing to an IP in this format. And here we just happen to pick our first 64 bits prefix to be 2123, and then mandatory 32 bits 0, 5E, FE, and then ending with the hexadecimal representation of our R2 IPv4 address, which is AC. 102, okay, which is RT loopback interface. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with uh, task number one here with ISOTAP tunnel network to network. We first need to configure ISOTAP tunnel between R2 and R3, where those tunnel interfaces must be sourced from the loopback zero of R2 and R3. And then we need to configure static routes on the routers to provide reachability between their loopback one, two, and three. And we are allowed to only use one static routes per destination router. And then we need to verify reachability between their loopback interfaces. And then we can review Wireshark packet captures just to look at the encapsulated packet. Okay, so let's start our configuration on R2. And just to do a quick show command, so you can see that we have the EIGRP enable with R2 learning R3 loopback interface, 172.16.03. And we should have the connectivity between the loopback zero. You can see you can ping from R2 to R3 loopback. So now let's get into the tunnel one interface. And from our diagram here, we need to use the prefix 2123 slash 64 for our tunnel subnet. Okay, so IPv6 address 2123 slash 64. And then we're just gonna use the EUI, which is the interface ID for our second half of the 64 bits. And then we need to source our tunnel from loopback zero. And then we just specify the mode of the tunnel for ISOTAP, it's IPv6 IP question mark. And here we have the ISOTAP for our option. Okay, next we need to configure IPv6 static route. And then for R2 to get to R3, you can see here R3 we have three subnets. All of them start with 2013. And you can see they are contiguous slash 64, so we can easily summarize them to a slash 62. 
And that way we can just configure a single static route that will represent all three of these subnets. Okay, so for IPv6 route, pointing to 2001.3 slash 62, and that's going to go out tunnel number one. And then we need to make sure that we specify our IPv6 next top address. And all you need is colon colon FE 5E, which is the mandatory bits. And then the hexadecimal value of the router R3 loopback IP, which is AC 10 3. Okay, now if you do show IPv6 interface tunnel 1, here we have our link local address on the tunnel interface. We also have the global unicast address with our prefix 2123. And since it's a isotap tunnel, as we specify as part of the mode, we can see here our mandatory FE5E and then ending with the hex number of our source interface, which is loopback 0. So for R2 is AC102. So that's the format. So now that we have the tunnel configured, we can enable the debug. ICMP just to be ready to be pinged on R2. Okay, so now we're going to hop over to R3 and configure also tunnel 1 with IPv6 address 2001.23 slash 64 EUI tunnel source loopback 0 tunnel mode IPv6 over IP with the isotap option. Same thing with IPv6 route. And for the subnet behind R2, we have a subnet that starts with 2001.2. Again, three of those contiguous slash 64. So we can also do a single slash 62 for all three of them. So that would be 2001.2 slash 62, tunnel 1. And then for next hop is 5EFE, AC, 10, and then 2 for R2 loopback 0. And let's also do debug IPv6 ICMP. Okay, so before we try our ping test, let's hop over to our Wildshark machine and enable Wildshark capture. Okay, so let's go start. And now from R3, we can try to ping, let's say R2 loopback 1, which is 2001, 2, 2, sourcing from its own loopback 1. And it looks like if you hop over here on R2, we get a ping request and send back a reply, but somehow R3 is not getting a reply. So let's see why. Okay, right here, it looks like I have input the incorrect static routes. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So instead of 2001.3, I put 2001.2, so that should be 3. Let's try to ping one more time. And you can see now that we have a ping reply on R3 from R2. As you can see, echo request going from 2001.33, going to 2001.22, and then from R2, we have a reply from 2001.22 back to 2001.33. Okay, and if I stop the Wildshark capture, you can see right here we also have the packet capture with the ping request from 2001.33. As you can see here with the encapsulation of the IPv4 on the outside, Sourcing from R3 loopback 0, which is 172.16.0.3, going towards R2 loopback 0, which is 172.16.0.2. And then right after that is our IPv6 header, which is a, that's the true IPv6 IP that we use for our ping. And then immediately after that, we have a payload, which is our ICMP v6 ping request type 128. And as you can see here, if we go one down, we also have a ping reply without the IPs in reverse. Okay, so let's do another quick test. And instead of sourcing from their loopback, we're just going to ping their link local address. So let's go ahead and continue without saving. And if we do show IPv6 interface tunnel 1, and here we have the link local address. As you can see here with the format, it already has the R2 loopback 0 IP embedded. So now if you're trying to ping that IP from R3, let me copy it one more time. Okay, so it's just a simple link local address ping. And that's why you have to specify the output interface. And that would be our tunnel one. Let me make sure I get that case right. So you can see you can ping tunnel one sourcing from its own link local address, which is FE80, 5EFE, AC103, going towards the one that belongs to R2. And if you look at the capture here, 
we see it's pretty much the same thing with the link local address on the IPv6 header. Okay, so just trying to ping the other way around from R2. We can ping 2001.3.3, sourcing from loopback 1. Okay, let's try to source with loopback 2, so that works 2, or even loopback 3. Okay, so now that we have complete connectivity between these two sets of IPv6 network behind R2 and R3. So that's complete our task number 1. Next for our task number 2, instead of using static route, we're going to try to enable EHR PV6 across the Isotap tunnel. So now we need to remove a static route on R2 and R3, and then configure EHR PV6 on R2 and R3, and then advertise the loopback 1 through 3, and then again verify the reachability between those loopbacks. Okay, so first on R2, let's remove the static routes. Let's look for command IPv6 routes here. No, removed, and then we can configure it or enable EIGRP. So if you've watched our EIGRP v6 video, it should be pretty straightforward. So IPv6 router EIGRP1. So get under the EIGRP routing process. Let's do passive default, and then we get the no passive tunnel one. And then we need to enable EIGRP under each one of the interface that we have. So first start off with loopback one, that IPv6 EIGRP1, and then loopback two and then loop back three, and then tunnel, interface tunnel one. Okay, and then hop on R3. Actually, we need to remove the static route first. So IPv6 route. Okay, and then router EHRP one. Passive default, no passive tunnel one, and then under loopback one, the PV6 EIGRP one, loopback two, loopback three, and then tunnel one itself. And as you can see here, although we have the EIGRP enabled on our tunnel interface already, we still do not have the neighbor adjacency coming up. And this is because by default EIGRP used the multicast packet to do the neighbor discovery, but since the way that we have everything set up here across the tunnel, the multicast packet doesn't really work. So what we need to do is to take advantage of the unicast neighbor discovery using the neighbor command. So now on R2, if we go back under the router, IPv6 router, EIGRP1, and if you've used the neighbor command under the router EHRP process before you know exactly what this does. So basically instead of multicast packet, it will send a unicast, but we need to specifically define what IPs you want the router to send the packet to. So here for R2, we need to send to R3, and that would be the link local, since it used the link local to form adjacency. So now let's do a quick show IPv6 interface tunnel one on R3, copy that, and then paste in there, and then we need to specify since it's link local. Let me just specify the interface that the router need to use. So now let me copy that and do the same thing on R3. And that will be pointing towards R2. Just updating that last octet there to be 2. And then enter. You can see as soon as we did that, immediately the neighbor adjacency came up. So now on R3, if we do show IPv6 EHRP neighbor. Clearly we have our neighbor adjacency that appears using the link local address, just like how we specify it using the neighbor command. And if we do show IPv6 route EHRP, and you can see here R3 has already learned three of these IPv6 subnets behind R2. So now if you're trying to ping from R3 to each of those subnets, so start off with 2001, 2. 2, which is the loopback one on R2. See that's pingable. And then we can try to source from loopback 2, and then loopback 3, and then we can try another loopback. So that would be 0, 1. And then we also have 0, 2 for loopback number 3 and R2. And you can see all of those are reachable. All right, so that completes our task number 2.